what unified school districts regularly schedule for a meeting on September 24th, 2020 at 5.33 p.m. Teleconferencing will be used during this meeting in accordance with the governor's executive orders uh, number N-25-20 dated March 12, 2020 and N-29-20 dated March 17, uh, 2020. Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Present. Mrs. Lopez? You're on mute, Mrs. Lopez. <clears throat> I'll continue and come back. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez? Present. Mr. Morales? Present. And Ms. Renteria? Ms. Lopez? Present. Thank you. I believe there's an announcement from General Counsel regarding the public hearing. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, with reference to Section 13 of the agenda, it's currently um, and was published as a public hearing approval of appointment of the board appointee to the personnel commission of the Linwood Unified School District. Um, actually, a, a typographical and production error uh, is reflected in that heading. Um, there's a statutory process that's set forth by the education code in which the board is to first nominate a potential appointee for that position prior to there being a public hearing and then consideration for that position. So um, the actual action item tonight that is going to take place is a, only a nomination for the position. And um, because of the standards of the Brown Act that allow for substantial compliance, um, I, I think the, the actual uh, nomination occurring in lieu of this uh, appointment is uh, acceptable under Brown Act standards based on the um, publication. There will be a public hearing, but it will not be tonight. It will be at an upcoming meeting um, to be scheduled either on the regular meeting date in November or the first meeting. So I apologize for the long um, description, but I think what we re require is um, a motion to amend 13A to revise it to reflect it will be a nomination of uh, Mr. Jose Salache to the position of the board appointee to the commission. Thank you for that. So if one of the board members or yourself could, could uh, direct that to occur and that amendment to occur, that would allow the uh, timing to, to proceed. Got you. So I, I move, I'll, I'll make a motion to, to amend the, uh, the action item as written to reflect the nomination um, and the action of approval at, at a later date. Is, is that correct? Correct. You may second the amendment. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. And Mr. Diaz, not here. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Move. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Present. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Thank you. Any public comments? No, sir. Thank you. At this time, we'll recess into closed session at 5.37 p.m. Mr. President, because of uh, one of the items listed, it requires a, an announcement, um, and I'll make that right now. Pursuant to paragraph 2, subdivision E of section 54956.9, uh, the facts and circumstances allowing for closed session are the Linwood High School soffit breakdown on June 16, 2020. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, we'll now recess at 5.37 p.m.
Buenas tardes. Eh, uh, este, uh, esta junta está siendo transmitida, se puede por, uh, por teléfono en español, el número 1-385-999-6177. El código es 844-736. Ocho siete tres y el número del, uh, del signo. Okay. Muchas gracias. Looks like we're all here, so we'll go ahead and get started. So calling back to order the Linwood Unified School District's regularly scheduled board meeting on September 24th, 2020 at 5.58 p.m. We're early, aren't we? So um, yeah, that's fine. So teleconferencing will be used during this meeting in accordance with the governor's uh, executive orders on N-25-20 dated March 12, 2020, and N-29-20, dated March 17, 2020. This meeting will be recorded in accordance with the, the Brown Act. Roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Present. Mrs. Lopez? Present. Ms. Gonzalez? Present. Mr. Morales? Present. And Ms. Renteria? Present. Thank you for that. Um, tonight's flag salute will be led by Cesar Chavez Middle School. Dr. Dinkins, not sure if you can hear me, but I'm not able to hear this uh, for the child's yes. middle school. Yes, I'm texting Rick now. It worked earlier. Our apologies, everyone. We are going on a different platform this evening and uh, appreciate your support and understanding with this. Yeah, I think he's figuring it out now, sir. Good to go, Mr. Jurado. And just so everyone knows, we uh, tonight we're uh, being assisted by Mr. Rick Jurado, Assistant Director of Research and Evaluation. So again, thank you for your patience as we try out this uh, new platform for the first time this evening, but we're feeling like this will be a little bit easier, more accessible for the public. And if not, maybe Dr. Dinkins, do you want to just uh, give us some background info about on Bridget and we can continue with the, tonight's yes. meeting. 
Bridget Avenado is our eighth grade ASB president at Cedar Chavez Middle School with aspirations to attend Columbia University. Um, I can just do the pledge. Everybody yes, stand. You. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, immutable liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins and uh, Cesar Chavez. Um, at this time, we'll move on to uh, student board reports. Starting with uh, Pathway High School. <laughs> Good evening, Board President Mr. Hardy and the Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Crossway, members of the Cabinet and Linwood community. My name is Maricela Reyes, and I am the Student Board rep Representative and a member of ASB for Vista High School. Pathway teachers have been distributing packets to all our students. Staff is continuing to call and email students to turn in completed assignments and pick up new assignments weekly. We are monitoring everyone to ensure we are social distancing and wearing proper safety items. Administration and faculty members are continually holding virtual staff meetings via Google Hangout. Pathway Panthers held our back to school night on September 17, 2020. The event was hosted virtually. Parents and students were allowed an opportunity to meet with their teachers and discuss classroom expectations. Mr. Ballinger will assist students to continue working with LA Artworks to enhance students' creations. In celebration of Latin, Latin Heritage Month, Vista's ASB will merge with Pathway to host weekly virtual events on Zoom to highlight persons to, that have been positive influence on the Latin community. Pathway students will be attending the virtual 2020 Latino College Expo on Friday, September 25th, 2020. Pathway staffs and students would like to welcome our newest Panthers. We welcome Mr. Man, Mandujando, special ed teacher. We would like to give a special thanks, I mean a special welcome to Mr. Ramon Enriquez, principal. A special thanks goes to Ms. Audrey Casas, former secretary for Pathway and now English teacher at Linwood High School. Thank you, Ms. Casas, for all the hard work and dedication to Pathway. ISP, you will be missed. Thank you so much for that. It's great to see a student in our meeting, uh, at least uh, by video for once. Now we'll move on to uh, Fireball High School. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good evening, Board President Mr. Hardy, Board members, Superintendent Dr. Crossway, District Cabinet members and Lingua community. My name is Leslie Benitez, ASB Board Representative from Marco Antonio Fireball High School, and this is my board report for September 24th, 2020. Fireball College and Career Center counselors are working hard to help students register for the SAT and ACT as well as providing seniors with opportunities to sign up for programs such as the Columbia Engineering Experience. They are holding Q&As meetings for students in case they have any questions to ask and to talk about this year's expectations for seniors. Club activities, ASB Week of Welcome. On the first week of school, ASB did a virtual Week of Welcome where they, have, where they hold fun activities that are interactive on their Fireball ASB Instagram page. A back to school announcement has been uploaded on their YouTube where they explain how the week will look like. The themes for the week were Monday, All of Me 2020 slash 2021, Tuesday, Freddy is Back and Ready, Wednesday, Black and Gold Forever, Thursday, Class T Day, and Friday, Falcon Friday. On August 26, there will be an all club meeting at 2 p.m. where students can ask questions or create slash continue their own clubs. All continuing clubs must reimburse. I mean, must recharter. On September 4th at 6 through 7, ASB members will, help, will hold a senior sunrise at Fireball High School parking lot structure. 
There, three giveaway prices were given to the seniors that decorated their cars. Due to COVID-19 precautions, there was a limit of 15 parking spaces and the maximum people of people inside each car is two. Senior and school events. ASB is working hard during the pandemic and are conducting business meetings online and has uploaded a YouTube video on Falcon TV for the event on the first week of school. Sports. All sports have been postponed due to, due to the implication of the COVID-19 social distancing until further notice. With Falcon Pride and ownership, this concludes the Marco Antonio Fireball High School. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fireball. Now we'll move on to Linwood High School. Good evening, board president, Mr. Hardy, board members, district cabinet members, and Lingwood community. My name is Zyra Hernandez, and I am Lingwood High School student board representative for the 2020-2021 school year. I am beyond excited to serve this year in this position, and I look forward to working with you. This is Lingwood High School student board report for Thursday, September 24th. College and Career Center. The College and Career Center will be going into the government and econ classes to start college presentations. They also, sorry. They also held the senior college orientation meeting with the theme of trivia on Tuesday, September 15th to go over some brief college updates and what to expect for the college app season. Students were able to participate in raffles for gift cards and enter a raffle to get the chance to win a laptop, printer, tablet, and other school supplies for the end of the semester. Lingwood High School had several college and universities host a virtual rep visit this week, September 21st through the 25th. On Monday, September 21st, UC Santa Cruz hosted the first virtual presentation. UC Santa Barbara was on Wednesday and Arizona State University will be tomorrow, Friday, September 25th. Students of all grades were welcome and encouraged to join to see how each school has their own application process and how they can be better prepared to apply for college. Back to school night. On September 26, Lingwood High School, on September 16, Lingwood High School held their virtual back to school night from 4 p.m. through 6 p.m. Parents were able to watch a welcome video from our principal, Ms. Gonzalez, as well as a Google site and virtual classroom exploration video, which helped parents navigate the website and access the meeting links. Parents were able to go into every single one of their children's classrooms and meet and greet all their teachers individually. Counselors. Our counselors shared a presentation with 11th and 12th graders with students discussing graduation requirements and other important information. In addition, they are meeting virtually, individually with their students from 1 to 3 p.m. This week's counselors started meeting virtually with parents as well. They started with the freshmen on September 22nd, seniors on September 24th, juniors on September 29th, and sophomores on October 1st. During these meetings, counselors discuss general student expectations, distance learning, student expectations, attendance, and grading policies, graduation requirements, and other important information. Credit recovery. Our credit recovery classes started last week on Monday, September 14. Enrollment is low compared to other semesters due to temporary grading policy implemented during school closure. Principals posse. On September 22nd, Lingwood High School held the first principal posse meeting of the year. It was held virtually during second period classes. Every second period teacher chose one representative from their classes to participate in these meetings. During the meetings, we went over concerns students have and provided them with monthly updates. Student representatives are able to ask their class period if they have any concerns they would like addressed during these meetings. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my board report for Lingwood High School. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just to confirm, uh, we have VISTA and Pathways report together. I want to make sure we, we didn't miss them. VISTA, VISTA did. No, VISTA needs to present. VISTA needs to present. Gotcha. Okay, let's, let's go to VISTA High School then. Good evening, board president, Mr. Harley, and the board of 
I don't know, Superintendent Dr. Crossway, members of the cabinet and the Linwood community. My name is Cheyenne Henry and I am the student board representative and a member of ASB for Vista High School. Teachers are working with students online through Google Classroom, News ELA, and Google Meets along with Hangouts as needed. Vista staff has been distributing laptops and hotspot as needed to students to ensure assignments with remote learning is provided. Staff is also co continuing to call and email students daily to ensure access to classroom and assignments. We are promoting, promoting everyone to ensure we are social distancing and wearing proper safety and items. Um, a factory members are continuing holding virtual staff meetings. V Visa, Google Hangouts, Vista Eagles held our, our held our back to school night on September 16, 2020. The event was hosted virtually. Parents and students were allowed an opportunity to meet with their students and discuss classroom expectations. Ms. Casuso, our students are continually working with LA Artworks to inhale students creation and celebration of Latino Heritage Month at ASB is hosting weekly virtual events on Zoom. During the event, ASB will be highlighting persons that have been a positive influence on the Latino community. Vista students will be attending the virtual 2020 uh, 2020 last Latino College Expo on Friday, September 25th, 2020. ASB finished this school year first edition of our monthly war newsletter. Vista students, Vista staff and students will be would like to welcome our new Eagles. Welcome to teachers Miss Sepulveda Mathematics and Miss Day Science. We would like to give a special welcome to Mr. Romain Hernandez, principal. Thank you so much. Now we'll finish off with uh, Linwood Community Adult School. Good evening, board members, Mr. Hardy and the Board of Education Sup Superintendent, Dr. Crossway, members of the cabinet and the Linwood community. My name is Michelle Diaz reading the report for Sharon Catman. And I am the student board representative for Linwood Community Adult School. The adult school started remote instruction on August 24th with expected tech, tech issues, but most were identified and resolved by the second week of instruction. The adult school office is open daily until seven to support day and evening students and to provide technology assistance. Plans for back to school night are still begin being developed but mark your calendars for October 28th. This includes Living Community Adult Schools report. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adult School. Now we'll move on to Superintendent's report. Thank you, President Hardy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was so great to have our student representatives. Oops, excuse me and uh, join us live tonight. We have missed you and welcome you to our meetings. I wanna thank all of our staff for the incredible work they're doing to support our students and families. And even though things are constantly changing, it's uh, just incredible to see everyone stepping up. And then I also want to take a moment to just say, a, say thank you to our students and families for all of your continued support, for your patience and your understanding. And tonight we have some exciting presentations from our uh, different divisions. And we will begin with um, our Ed Services, Dr. Dinkins. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Um, next slide, please, Rick. Um, I'm happy to announce that in light of the pandemic, um, the California Coalition for PBIS created a new award because with the school's closures, they weren't able to do the school visits and observations. So they created the 2020 
California PBIS Community Cares Recognition to acknowledge schools for their positive impact on the community during the COVID-19 pandemic. I am proud to say that the criteria, next slide please, the criteria was based on social media check-ins, virtual recognitions, car parades laid by staff, parent recognitions with home visit campaigns, and staff and family check-ins. And we have 14 schools, next slide Rick, recognized for all of their hard work. We might have been down for school closures, but we were still uplifting our community. Congratulations to all 14 sites. I'm very proud of you and your efforts. Thank you. Next slide, please. So our learning continuity plan, we have had robust uh, family engagement from our community. I wanna personally thank those parents who reached out to me, who gave me feedback, who sent me emails, who filled out the survey. I'm so grateful and appreciative of you because it does take a village. So we had several meetings. We did our survey where we had over 500 responses and areas of feedback uh, via survey and emails and letters um, all fell under four broad themes of communication, such as think of uh, multiple ways to communicate to the community due to the virtual climate we're in, social media, they love what we're doing on social media and would like for us to, com to continue to broadcast and highlight all the wonderful things that are happening in our great district. Academics, they are excited about the enrichment classes, the art classes, the dance, the yoga classes. Um, they are looking forward to the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, the homework hotline, as well as um, some interventions that are coming our way. And last but finally not least, uh, a big one for all of us, but mostly important to underscore for our students and families is social emotional learning and wanting to make sure that not only are we supporting our kids academically in school, but the, we are also concerned for their well-being all around. Again, thank you so much for the robust family um, survey, for all of the communication surrounding the survey. It will lead our work as we move forward, and I'm very appreciative to our students and families. That concludes my report, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. President Hardy, are there any questions or comments regarding uh, these two presentations? I just wanted to say, I just want to thank uh, our staff for being diligent and gathering parent feedback. This uh, learning continuity plan would not be right if it did not have parent voice included. So just kudos to all of you for making sure we reached out to the, to the community, make sure that that was included, but also to our parents that took time to, to share their feedback. Uh, I think um, this has been a very trying time and that uh, parent feedback pieces has allowed us to pivot and adjust our course offerings and uh, provide additional resources uh, based off of what parents share with us. So I'm um, really excited to see what is the ultimate outcome of, of this work as well. Thank you, President Hardy. If there are no other questions or comments. I see now... um, Ms. Renteria raised her hand, sir. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. Thank you for that. Yeah, I have a quick question. I sure. know that um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we have a survey. Is there any way that we can make those survey results available just so that we can know what are the areas that we should work on? And a follow-up question to the survey, do we have that data desegregated by school? And have we provided that to the schools themselves so that they can also make uh, efforts to provide additional services or just move forward with whatever feedback they received by school? Yeah, great question. Thank you for asking that, Mr. Renteria. You know, we, we had a deadline, I believe it was September 14 to get uh, feedback from the community, but we got some uh, information as late as Monday and we didn't want to turn anything away. We really wanted to make sure that we, you know, took a uh, opportunity to listen to it from the community and get their feedback. So these are the four major areas and our staff has, again, begun the uh, process of disaggregating the data and also looking at where the surveys are coming from. And then what we're gonna be doing next is sharing that information, of course, with the principals, but we also wanna make sure that we get a response back to the community. So if any members uh, from the community uh, you know, submitted some questions or concerns, some recommendations, we also will be responding individually to each one of them. And then the other thing is we're gonna translate everything. So. If you submitted something in, in Spanish, we will translate it uh, to English as well as Spanish because, again, we want to make sure that this is accessible to everyone 
And again, this is the first time that districts have had to do something like this, but you know, it's not uh, so I'm very proud of the staff for rising up to the challenge and, and doing whatever possible to make sure that we inform the community about this. You know, we all, we sent out the phone calls, but also the schools and the district did a great job in sharing this information publicly on social media. And we had some community members out there who really pushed for this as well. And, and they were the ones who took responsibility. And I'll tell you, we got packets about this thick with all the feedback that they provided. And those are the ones that we didn't want to turn away because they really did a good job of going out there and being diligent about getting additional feedback. And they actually broke it down for us in, in sections as well. I also had a, a quick comment. Um, I just also wanted to thank staff for all the work. I know that these are difficult times. We're not as connected. Um, and I, you know, I, I heard from the community and saw the community responding to the survey. And um, it was really great to see that and see that we were doing things we weren't doing before to make sure that we reached out to, to our families, um, especially, especially in, during this time where we're disconnected. And I also had one more uh, question. I was curious to know, do you feel that we got a higher response um, with this plan than we've had with the other parent surveys we've done in the past for LCAP? Or was it about the same? I'm just curious. I'm going to say uh, 10 times more because the LCAP process was completely different this time. It's no longer the LCAP, but that's what we're used to calling it. But previously, the Ed Code only provided that we hold the stakeholder meeting and inform parents. This is the first year they have required feedback. And I can tell you for, first and foremost, um, to me, that was the best part because without the feedback from our stakeholders and thank you to those parents who really, really pushed the survey, um, we would not be informed enough to write such a wonderful plan. And our plan is very cohesive. We received kudos from LA County and um, I'm very proud of it. And I love the process and I, I like it better than the old one. And I'm sure the parents would agree. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to have a question from Ms. Dinkins. Um, I would like some explanation for the parents, for the community yes. on the social emotional learning. What is it that um, parents can take advantage of this uh, area or the students? So what, what we're in the process of doing now, along with our student services department, is we're looking to adopt a curriculum we also um, have a, a, I don't wanna say, it's not a vendor, it's not a curriculum, but we have a set of things that we use through our PBIS, which we are still doing, even in a virtual environment. We just had our schools retrained for this school year. So we have our, our strategies that we're using with students. We have made our hotline for anyone needing um, outreach. We have made that virtual and there's a link for that. And um, we are looking at bringing in Second Step. Um, we have our social workers, our licensed social workers, and looking to add more. And then bringing in a Second Step um, curriculum, which is a lot of short videos that can be played for students. And we have the information um, online so the parents can reach that information or the students yeah. when they feel like they need some support, emotional support. Yes, our hotline is public. We have a QR code. If you go on there on the website, if the Q, scan the QR code with your phone, the form pops up and on the hotline, our five licensed social workers will respond to any calls. Well, thank you very much because I, I was looking into this um, learning continuity plan. It's actually very well developed, but I just had a question on social and emotional learning. That is something that is really needed right now. And one great thing coming, um, Ms. Lopez, is we are putting banners. We have ordered banners with the QR codes, so they are widely advertised because everybody's still not comfortable going online and going to websites, but with the banners, they can scan with their phone and it take them straight to the form, as well as the number for the hotline will also be posted. Well, that is awesome because anyone can reach it then if you put it in, you know, on the street, on the schools, especially yeah. in every school. Yes. With the big yes. banners, how to get into the, 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 the social media and all of that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure.
just a quick kudos on the hotline. I was, I was on a panel on Wednesday and I mentioned the hotline and it was about 150 attendees, mostly uh, school district uh, admin and teachers. And they were shocked that we had a, that we had a hotline that was so successful and, and allowed us to provide additional resources to parents. So I think that's a, a very vital resource. It was um, thoughtful to put it in place, but I'm happy to see that as, the, as time has gone on that we've gotten um, better at, at aligning resources to that um, specific tool for our parents. So I'm happy to see that we'll be um, publicizing the, the hotline more broadly throughout the community. So again, just kudos to all, all your work. And I guess like we say, we know it wasn't easy, um, but I think that the end result that included uh, parent collaboration and community voice, but also um, thoughtfulness and ingenuity of our staff is going to um, be better for our community uh, in the long run. So kudos to, to you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, President Hardy. And continuing, I'd like to pass it over to Dr. Lucas, who will be uh, providing you with some uh, important and exciting information about our new employees to Living Unified. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the community and the board members and any uh, faculty, staff, or administrators we have listening tonight. I am Brian Lucas. I'm your Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources and so proud to work with over 1,600 amazing employees who have pivoted, we use that word a lot, but pivoted and worked incredibly hard to support the community and students um, with our pandemic uh, crisis that we're going through. This is normally a board meeting where we, uh, I, I think it's one of the more fun board meetings, no offense board members, but sometimes the meetings aren't so fun, but this is a fun one where we invite new employees to have joined the district to come on down and to meet you all. And it's a little bit of a celebratory um, environment. And um, this year, unfortunately, as we are all experiencing right now, it, um, it's, we are, are not able to do that. So to try to lighten the mood a little bit or celebrate our uh, amazing new employees who can you imagine starting a new job and starting a new job in a pandemic? I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Um, so, uh, but to, to kind of lighten the mood a little bit, I'd like to um, play a game with you board members. And I'm gonna lovingly call it, uh, Mr. Harad, if you can go to the next screen. It's called Question the Board. So here's how the, <laughs> here's how the game works. I hope all board members, you can see it. Mr. Harad, if you could click for the next. So these six uh, either words or numbers are something about our new employees, about the new hiring that happened over the summer or um, just, just something about new, new folks coming on board. So as any good teacher will do, I'm gonna model one for you. And the question is, what does 82 mean about personnel, hiring, new, new people coming on board? And you might say 82 is um, the uh, graduation rate of our uh, youngest employee, oldest employee that we hired. You know, you're just gonna make up ideas about what you think it is. But I'll tell you, after you give me some, some well-informed suggestions, 82 is actually, Mr. Gerardo, the number of classified employees that we hired over the, course of the, over the course of our hiring season. So our classified hiring season, we actually counted every employee after September of last year to this year. So we have hired 82 new classified employees. So now I'm gonna have you do what do you think instructional assistance means? You might need to unmute all of you, but what is so, what's so special about instructional assistance in our hiring season? Any ideas? I'm going to take a wild guess and say that our instructional assistance during this season had to be more tech savvy than, than, than in the past. Good guess. Anyone else want to try something? Um, I think that the instructional assistance right now can be part of like community liaison, calling the, the, the families to see how they can help. Uh, that's, uh, you know, like giving out uh, like grab and go materials, things like that. Excellent. Good, good ideas. That's why you all are board members, because that's actually a much higher level than, than my idea, which is next. Go ahead, Mr. Gerardo. The instructional six assistants happen to be our largest group of hires that we've hired over this past school year. We've hired 25 new instructional assistants. Now, what do you think the number seven represents? This is kind of a hard one, but any, any guesses? 
Seven administrators. Oh, good one. Good guess. <laughs> Anything else? I was going to say we got seven new teachers. Uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> seven uh, school sites. Uh-huh. Very good. All excellent ideas. Unfortunately, all are wrong. Mr. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is the number of certificated hires that are actually LUSD alumni. So we're particularly proud of that, uh, of that uh, continuity of service, right, here, here in Linwood. Um, it is HR's goal to recruit and get as many folks that we can get in that are alumni. And of course, we have our relationship right now, which I know you've heard about with Alder University, and um, trying to do just that even more so on the certificated front. LHS, obviously that's Linwood High School, but what do you think that has to do with hiring and new employees this year? They had the most new employees. Excellent. Nice job, Ms. Renteria, correct? <laughs> they are the school with the most new teachers at 15 new teachers were hired for Linwood High School. You all will recall that last year we had the voluntary retirement program and over 40 staff members took advantage of that program with Flintwood High School being uh, the school that was most affected, uh, but they did rehire 15 new teachers. Next one, culinary arts. What do you think about that one? Uh, we need more t-shirts. <laughs> Ms. Lopez, you hit the nail on the head. Go <laughs> ahead, Mr. Gerardo. This was actually, believe it or not, the certificated uh, position that was the hardest to recruit this school year. I know we normally talk a lot about special educators being difficult in math and science, and of course, that's still the case. But our culinary arts, we, culinary arts, we had very few certificated applicants and had to look long and hard to, um, to recruit some strong people for that. Um, one last little bit. This is, this, is, this is an easy one, Zoom. How, how the challenge for parents and community and uh, stuff. Yes. That was, that was where all the interviews, orientation, trainings happened so far, right? There you go, Mr. Hardy. HR, as well as all of our amazing employees had to, had to pivot, had to transition over to Zoom. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, uh, for certificated interviews, maybe it's a little bit easier because you can do sample lessons online and that sort of thing. But you know, our, classif our classified team had to come up with some very creative ways of doing assessments and testing that um, are all part of our merit system, all using Zoom and taking care of all of that. So um, Mr. Drado, I, I don't know if the sound is working. Is the sound working? I had just one little. So that's question the board game. There you go. Nice job, everybody. So uh, before I go on, I just want to say we are going to, uh, I'm not going to highlight every single new employee's names. That would take a substantial amount of time. But I did want to get our new employees' names in front of you just so you could see who they are and recognize them for, again, coming into the amazing Littlewood School District that is on the move. Um, and so if you'll go to the next slide, Mr. Gerardo. Uh, we already went over this one. One more, please. Some staffing highlights there for you to review at a different time, breaking down by different classifications and things that we've uh, uh, done our work through. And here we begin our classified employees that are brand new. Again, remember classified, these are the folks who started over the course of last year and this fall. Go ahead, Mr. Gerardo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think 
this is the last one. One more. Thank you very much, Mr. Gerardo. So again, uh, same idea with our certificated employees. Uh, I, perhaps I should have had that theme music playing throughout this, <laughs> this time, uh, but you can have it in your mind perhaps. But our new certificated employees, you'll go on to the next slide, Mr. Gerardo. Uh, one highlight I didn't mention in our game, you've seen that we did have 39 new certificated employees and again, 25 are at the secondary level. Um, and so one other highlight was that we hired uh, substantial amounts from special education, 13 employees, seven science, I already mentioned seven alumni, and six of our employees are, uh, are in our partnership with the Teacher America program. And so what is up next are these folks' names. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have one more. Oh, no, this is just, I got to give a shout out to the HR team who does all of this work over the summer. And again, in the midst of pandemic, still getting us fully staffed and ready to go for, for a very different and challenging school year. Here they are, such an amazing team that did this work. And thanks to all of them. And thanks to all of you for our support. And that concludes the HR portion of tonight's presentation. Thank you, Thank Dr. You, Lucas. Uh, President Hardy, any questions or comments? That was uh, an outstanding way to uh, present the new hires. I, I know we're used to being able to welcome them in person, but that um, almost made me feel like I was uh, back at the office being able to celebrate where I'm employed. So uh, B. Lou, awesome work as always. Um, looking forward to at some point being able to meet some of these folks in person as, and, and welcome home to our seven alumni that are joining us as well. So thank you to um, all of your staff for the great work for, for getting this done. I just want to say thank you, Mr. Lucas. It was fun. It's a break in the eyes. Very nice. Thank you. I also wanted to just give a quick shout out just to the HR department itself. Um, coming from another school district, right now it's so hard to fill positions. And distance learning is just so tough that even like certificated positions are hard because teachers don't know what it's gonna be like to come into a classroom right now. So just to the HR department, like thank you for just being on top of it and being so diligent. Um, I'm super excited to see seven alum coming back. That's always just, it feels like, yes, we're back home. Um, that's always a win. But just in general, seeing us be fully staffed is just such a, it's kind of like one thing less to worry about. So thank you to the whole team for all of your hard work. And then I also want to say, I think um, it, it shouldn't be missed that uh, our financial picture of, of us taking proactive steps to make sure that we have a balanced budget for the next couple of years even allows us to do this. Um, again, to hire within the pandemic with um, people saying budget cuts is, is rare to, to a certain degree, but to hire at the level that, that we did is also to, to be commended. So also kudos to uh, Greg Fromm and his staff for Continue, with, continue to allow us to make good decisions with, with our, our, our resources and, and budgets to, in order to have uh, quality staff and, and not be dealing with uh, tremendous um, job loss like we are seeing in other places. And I think it, we have to do a better job of um, celebrating our wins when we can, because that is not the case uh, across every district in California and certainly not across the districts um, in, in the, across the nation. So a uh, great job to all that were involved in, the, in this process, but overall, our approach to providing a high quality education to our, our families um, by um, hiring the most qualified staff. Thank you, President Hardy, and thank you, Dr. Lucas. And, you know, this wouldn't have been possible without the board's vision about approving the early retirement incentive. And I think that we're in a definitely in a better position uh, compared to many, many districts throughout the state of California and throughout the country because of your vision and support. And uh, that, that's what allowed us to be where we're at today. So thank you again for making that happen because you approved that way ahead of time before the pandemic. 
And uh, now continuing with uh, just the last presentation, we wanna give you an update regarding Linwood High School, Mr. Greg Fromm, our CBO. Yes, thank you. Dr. Lucas, that was great. I was so engaged, it was very fun. It, was, it put a little pep in my step now, so I thank you for putting that on now. It's kind of tough to follow up that though, and that. So I'm gonna give you a brief update on the facilities over at Linwood High School. A couple of weeks ago, we were here and, and you passed a emergency resolution so we could uh, bypass the state bidding requirements so, so we could get to work on removing the risk at Linwood High so we can bring the students back. Next slide, please. So I'm just gonna present to you the timeline that we're, follow that we're following. Some, some things have been done and some things will, are, start, are starting to begin. The, uh, this first, our pre-construction timeline uh, is wrapping up. Uh, it started on the 2nd of September and went through yesterday. Uh, we've completed walks, uh, site walks with potential contractors. Um, we provided them with a scope of work for the removal of the ceilings. Um, that has been done. We've also gathered propose, propose, proposals, we reviewed re and we reviewed those. Um, now we're in the, procure, the, procure, the procurement stage where um, we, yesterday we provided the awards to the, to the bids that are gonna go out and do the work. Um, now they will turn in their bonds and all the pertinent documents that they need to do to start. Um, then beginning next week, they'll be getting uh, pre-construction. We'll begin to meet about that and we'll give the um, firms uh, the, no, the notice to proceed. And then beginning on the 5th of October, construction should begin where they will start to remove the risk with an anticipated completion date is before the 1st of Decem December. Um, if we can stick to this, we'll be on track to hopefully have the school available for students to come back on if we're allowed to bring students back after the first of the year. Once again, this is for the remo removal of the risk, which once that risk is removed, that will allow the site to be safe so students and adults can be on there and come back to work. Students can come back on that, those sites to learn. Any questions? Uh, again, I know you didn't give us a, a trivia game to play, but this is uh, super important work. And I just want to uh, commend you and your staff and general counsel for guiding us and expediting this process so that we identified the areas of risk and, and ways to mitigate that. I want to make sure that we are spelling out that we are not limiting the inspections to the area of, of collapse, but ensuring that the entire school is safe before we um, proceed back to having uh, kids back and, and staff back on campus. So that, that should be definitely um, noted in, um, in, in our reporting. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can share our update with the community as to uh, some of the steps that we're doing to address these issues uh, so that they're aware as well. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, thank you, Mr. Hardy. And um, I just wanna also acknowledge that we have Ms. Debbie Diaz, LTA president, uh, joining us this evening as we welcomed our new um, certificate employees as well. And that concludes my uh, presentation. I'm sir Diana, uh, Ms. Hawkins is also in the audience this evening, CSEA president. That's great, thank you, Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Crossway and cabinet. Now we'll move on to uh, Borman reports, starting with Ms. Renteria. Thank you, President Hardy. Uh, good evening to everyone. I'm so happy that we all get to come back together, even if it is virtually. I just wanted a, a couple of things. So first, I wanted to thank the parents for submitting your uh, recommendations to us for the learning continuity plan. I actually, that was my night reading yesterday, and I really, really appreciate all that you shared. And I wanted to highlight some of those things because I was hoping that staff maybe can provide us uh, some information. I know one of the big recommendations was uh, providing a one-stop shop place that a physical space so that if you guys have tech issues and you need to exchange your Chromebook, we know the location because you're right, it will save instructional time on the long run. Um, so I, I really appreciated just the thought behind all of your recommendations because that's a big one. 
I know at our school, we do uh, on a daily basis, if a parent needs to do a Chromebook exchange, we have a warehouse where they go to. And then we also provide in-person support at the school site, uh, obviously using social distancing guidelines, but ensuring that you have a place to go to. So I want to make sure that uh, as parents, you feel supported. And if you if you don't feel like there's enough information out there, um, I think that that's, that's a good reminder for us as well to just make that information more readily available so that everyone knows that there is an opportunity for you to do those things. Um, I also saw a lot of uh, feedback around just uh, distance learning as a whole. I know it's challenging. We actually just received our own survey data uh, for our school site today. And it was just so, it was so real because on the one hand, we had the majority of parents saying, we know it's hard, but I'd rather this than put my child uh, at risk. But at the same time, we have that other group that we are aware you're struggling because tech is hard and troubleshooting doesn't just come naturally, it comes with practice. So I do invite our parents to uh, get engaged with their school sites. I went and I looked at every one of our websites just to make sure that we're providing those additional resources. Um, and on the, for the most part, most of our school sites do have that available. But we hear you. I saw that one of the recommendations was uh, using texting as a reminder because you're right, text is easy. And if we send everyone a text, hey, here's a Zoom link for a virtual parent academy tonight, you are more inclined to attend because you just got it through text. So thank you for that feedback. Uh, and I just, I could go on and on because honestly, all of those recommendations really were uh, meaningful. And I know how much time and effort was put by the parent network and just by all the parent uh, leaders that made that happen um, and know that we are listening to you, we're reading it and we are, we're doing our best. Um, I also wanna just commend our teachers. The last couple of weeks have been hard. Um, and for those of you that I know are at home and are struggling, just know that a lot of these tech issues are out of our teachers' controls. I know that the other day Google Drive was down and I had calls all day by parents like, the teacher's not, uh, the teacher submitted work and it's not opening. It's like, well, yeah, it's Google Slides and Google's not working. Uh, so, so just, I ask that you please be patient and just remember that when it comes to technology, it is an enhancer of instruction and our teachers are gonna do the best they can, but unfortunately they are not um, the tech gurus of the world that are able to fix Zoom when Zoom has a shutdown uh, and those things happen. And I think it's just important to remember that in the same way that we can be at school and, and on some days uh, we would have random power outages, that's what technology feels like when you just, it's out of your control. So um, just a reminder to everyone to please, whenever you get a chance, email a teacher and say thank you because I guarantee you that even on the days where, where they're struggling, they're really trying hard. Uh, same for our administrators um, and same for just our district staff. I know that it's easier, and I, I suffer from this too, it's easier to see all the things that are not working because you're always kind of in action mode. How do we fix it? What do we do different? But it's equally important during this times, and especially during this challenging times, that we are grateful and just show a little bit of kindness because that little um, act of kindness is gonna go a long way and it's just gonna make, it, it's gonna have a ripple effect. So I, I ask everyone to just be kind to one another and be patient. Uh, I know that on the long run, things will get better. And I am very, very hopeful that we will eventually be able to open up. Our, our kids need to be at our schools and I wholeheartedly feel that, but just work with us to make sure that that happens in a safely manner and using data. So that's it for me. Thank you to all of our staff for just being such hard workers. I sometimes am afraid that you don't sleep enough and I need you guys to sleep because this is for the long run. Uh, but just know that your work does not go unnoticed. So I appreciate everything you guys bring to the table. That's it for me. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Morales. If you're there, I just saw him. Okay, well, I am here, but I'm having technical difficulties. My phone was about to run out of juice and I had to go run and find a charger. <laughs> but I want to add to what Ms. Venturia was saying briefly. Uh, you know, my daughter attends Linwood schools, and I've had the experience now where my internet went out. It happened to be the day that I was the one helping her on the, on the computer. And uh, I didn't know what was going on. And I finally uh, figured it out, and I had a hotspot my phone at the time to uh, help her out. And I also saw when the teacher lost the internet. 
And you know, what Ms. Ventria said is true. And I know it's very stressful for the parents and a lot of times the grandparents, because it's the grandparents that are sometimes helping out while mom and dad are working. So everyone be you know, conscious of that. I know that our staff is. The teachers, particularly my daughter's teacher has been wonderful. And I know that we've got teachers across the district like that all around. But uh, it's gonna be a hard time. Uh, it's good to see some students on here tonight and to hear from them. And um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this and we're gonna make things work and we're gonna be successful. And I, I, I appreciate the district staff and all the work that they're doing to make sure that our schools are going to be ready to go when we come back online. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Morales. Now moving on to Ms. Gonzalez. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to welcome all our new Linwood family, all these new certificated and classified staff that are joining us. Um, you know, really excited that, that you're on board. We, like everyone's talking about, these are really interesting, difficult times and everyone has to be really flexible. So we appreciate your willingness to join us in this adventure. So just wanted to say thank you. And quickly, I just wanted also to um, highlight our nutrition services program. Um, in the last few weeks, they've done a lot. They, they're so amazing. I know that um, Mr. Fromm's working with them and they expanded the hours that they were um, offering the meals. I saw them on social media and like different community groups advertising the meals. They're on Instagram showing what menu we have. Um, and I thought it, that was just really great to make sure that families know about the meals that are available for them. I know it's difficult for everyone. And I just wanted to let them know that I appreciated them for that extra work that they're doing and for going above and beyond. And with that, I just conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Mrs. Lopez. Thank you, President Hardy. I just want to welcome every single resident of Linwood, Unif Linwood Unify and Linwood City. Um, I just want to also to congratulate all the new uh, certificated that we employed they are in total 39 and 82 classified. And uh, of course, we were talking about the Zoom. What the Zoom means for this pandemic situation? For me, what I see is that Zoom is the link of the new learning system. If we didn't have Zoom or Google Meet, it will be impossible to connect families with the teachers and the the students with their uh, counselors is a big, big issue. And one of the things that I, I have seen with the internet system right now, every single household has at least one or two students that are attending the school through via Zoom or Google Meet. And the internet go down very often. I was listening one of the classes for my grandson. And one day the teacher said, excuse me, I don't have internet service. Can you wait for me? And they were waiting when she came back, all the kids were waiting. So it's a big issue right now with the connection. But as Ms. Renteria said, we need to be patient with one another because also for me, the parents has become teacher safe. The teacher is there, but the parent has to be there with the kids. Because if the parents are not there, the kids go to sleep or go to the fridge or do something else. But the parents are there. And I want to thank from the bottom of my heart to all the parents that are pending to the education because the teachers are doing so much to make the students learn in this new system. This new system requires much more, more planning. Uh, how to engage with the students, how to engage with the little kids and the parents of the little kids. It's a lot. I want to thank also the school district because the grab and go is very, very important. Every week they have new materials and they go plan according to the materials they give. It's awesome. For me, it's something very important. Um, again, um, one of the, the things that I was looking at is that every single household has become a Linwood Unified School District school. The school of the 
Flores, the school of the Hardys. We have a school in every single house because instruction is going on in there. So for me, it's like a new, new history, new history that is going to become very powerful in the future. Right now we are changing the history of this, not only this country, but globally is going to be so important. So whatever we have to afford and give in this new system is something that is going to be extremely important in the future. So thank you very much for all the efforts that the district, that the parents, then the kids are doing to get their knowledge up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Lopez. And for me, um, kudos um, to everybody. I think it, it has been, to say that this has been difficult is an, is an understatement. I know oftentimes we feel like we're uh, chasing a moving target or an ever vanishing uh, finish line with trying to get to the other side of this pandemic. But if I remind our staff, as I'm looking at you all, sort of um, your, your faces uh, filled with halfway pride, halfway exhaustion. If you remember our, our night here uh, with that town hall and what that experience was like, it was frustrating. Um, we, we were sweating trying to make it happen. But the theme of that night was that we stayed the course until we got it right, until we were able to engage with our parents as we promised. And I think that has to be the theme. Uh, this is learning right now until we can get back back to schools. Um, like like we said, you know, this is not a situation where we can expect perfection because there's so much that's out of our side of our control, um, so much that we have no say over, um, a lot of, of guidelines that we are are acting within that we have no oversight over. So I think to uh, set a bar for perfection is, is one that will um, leave us falling short each time. But again, if our goal is to stay the course until we get it right, I think uh, we will uh, still continue to offer a quality education to our, our, our children and resources and opportunities to our, our families. Um, I think it is always easy to criticize in hindsight, um, but far better to collaborate and engage in advance to, to make sure that we are moving in the right direction and that we have all parties involved at the table so that we have um, the, the, the best outcome in, in place. Um, with that said, um, I wanted to shout out all of our staff, our parents, our teachers, our leaders of our associations for uh, conducting the thorough walkthroughs that, that we had at school sites last week. Um, we, we know that there have been challenges at, at our school sites, um, but I think the solution is in our unity and our collaboration. Um, so it, it was great to see all parties uh, involved having different uh, lenses of, of sort of observation at our school sites, but also bringing a wealth of knowledge and a, you know, their toolkits of, of, of ideas. One thing that I do want to mention is, you know, we were uh, at Washington Elementary School and, and talked about sort of borrowing from some of the ideas that hotels are using, um, using a system that we know that um, we can, when we sanitize a classroom that we lock it out so no one else can go in and contaminate that before the teacher who was assigned to that room is going to uh, approach um, the room that uh, the next school day. And I think that's the type of innovation and um, bold action we got to take in order to ensure that we have an ability to educate kids in, in, in a way that is safe and, and sanitized uh, for our families and, and our staff as well. Um, it's, it's, it's sufficient to say that this is a, a new ball game and the things that we did in the past are, are no longer applicable. Um, and to be honest, we've said it more times than we can count, you know, normal was not working for a lot of people, but I'm excited to see how our staff and our families and our teachers have pivoted to meet the moment. Um, and oftentimes we forget what this journey has entailed um, when we are not talking about um, where we went from uh, mid-February to how we are today. And we should be tremendously proud of the way that we approached and supported our communities from distributions of food to food pantries to the way that our hotline has been utilized in a way that we are supporting the mental and social and emotional uh, health of, of our families, the, the way that we provided uh, resources through uh, Chromebooks and, and hotspots the way that we have ensured that we are providing IT support to parents and teachers, I, I can go so on, so on. I can go on and on. Um, I think that um, it's it's a testament to what we believe here in Linwood is that we are doing the best to to provide a quality education that stands as a beacon of hope for our families and, and our kids. So again, I want to thank everybody that has been involved that has uh, put in the hours. I know our cabinet is probably tired of hearing from me because I'm always uh, coming up with questions and ideas that for us to consider. Um, but it's just uh, the, the nature of us trying to do whatever it takes to get this right. And I think 
when you have that type of mindset that you do the work and you stay the course till you get it right. I think that is a, a winning um, uh, equation. And with the winning team that we have, the dream team of our cabinet, um, again, I'm, I'm just proud to, to be a part of this work at this time in this historic moment that I know a lot of us are tired of being a part of, um, but I'm also very proud of the outputs and the outcomes that we've been able to see. And um, just tonight, again, being able to hire that many employees, that many quality employees, that many alumni, is just a testament of what we're doing here in Linwood Unified. So kudos to you all and to our commu community as, as well to, to ensure that um, we are including parent voice because we cannot do without parent engagement throughout this process. So now we'll move on to public comment. Um, we will uh, conduct public, public com comment as outlined and we will dis display. Was, was there a comment? Gotcha. So we'll, we'll display a timer for public comments. I believe there is public comment tonight. And I'll President uh, Hardy, we have, Dr. Lucas to. Yes, President Hardy, we have a few public comments and Dr. Lucas will be helping us at, and we do have the timer ready to go as well. Thank you. Thanks, sir. First public comment is from Tammy Kamka. Hello, I would like to address specific, edu uh, specific education returning to in-person learning. I'm not sure why this is being considered. I'm not sure it's understood what is required in our classrooms and how this would be a health hazard. Most of our students are not capable of wearing protective masks and will not understand why we have masks on our faces. They would not be able to read our expressions or hear us clearly. We also will not be able to keep the six feet safety distance due to the fact that we are hands on the whole six hours. We sit right next to our students the whole day doing much hand over hand work, feeding and changing diapers. Many of our students are not capable of being able to understand to cover their mouths while sneezing, coughing, or vomiting, leaving us covered, clothes and skin, in saliva droplets or bodily fluids. We also have several adults in each class due to behaviors in nursing, far too many adults in one room. We can't separate classrooms due, due to the law that only credentialed teachers are allowed to teach the curriculum with us assisting them. Due to all of these things, I feel it is dangerous and irresponsible to send special education back into the classroom for in-person learning. Many of our students have underlying conditions that make them vulnerable to COVID-19. COVID cases are on the rise in LA County, and I feel it is uh, dangerous for staff and students to return right now. If it is too dangerous for regular education to return, it is far too dangerous for special education to return. I would like to speak on this matter at the September 25th board meeting. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Francisco Lopez. My name is Francisco Lopez and I am a staff member for Congresswoman Barragan. I would like to address the board regarding an event that the Congresswoman is hosting on October 10th. I am reaching out to share an opportun upcoming opportunity for Linwood Unified students to participate in Congresswoman Barragan's Virtual Service Academy Day on Saturday, October 10th at 10 a.m. The Congresswoman is inviting all students and parents to learn about what the services academies have to offer, including a free education and much more. Service Academy officials will be in attendance to give presentations and answer questions. We will also explain our office's nomination process and the specific application requirements. I have attached a letter from Congresswoman Barragan along with the flyer for the event. We would greatly appreciate if you could share this invitation with your students and their parents. We are encouraging people to RSVP by October 7th by visiting the following link, which is bit.ly slash virtual service academy day. Thank you for your help with sharing this invite widely. Our next public comment is from Mr. E. Medal. Good evening, school board member, school board president, and, and superintendent. Mr. Fromm called me personally on September 22nd, 2020 to answer my question. No SRO presence at any LUSD campuses. Thank you for your commitment and safety of our students because from August 31st to September 12th, I witnessed firsthand the oppression of the sheriffs at Imperial and Normandy firing 
flash bangs, pellets, rubber bullets to intimidate, <coughs> excuse me, to intimidate us peaceful protesters against Dijon Kizzi's murder. The sheriff slashed tires, stopped independent reporters, put them in squad cars, and unlawfully took photos of them, giving no explanation. Others were told to leave, get into their cars, but were immediately arrested seconds after they were told by sheriff to leave. So please invest more on campus counselors, psychologists, and alternatives. <clears throat> Vote yes on Measure J. Vote Gascon. Bring back SB 731. Just please vote to make our communities safe. I'd now like to share my thoughts about Chris Patton. May the Patton family rest in assurance that Chris, or little brother, as we call those who are enthusiasts and supportive of the dance world, is resting in peace. Chris was one of the many male dancers that I had the privilege to teach, support, guide, advise, and look after. In 2010, Chris was part of the Black History Month celebration at Linwood High School by dancing to the Jackson Five, and I believe I can fly. Footage of the countless hours of practice at the rec center in Linwood and Fireball High are left behind to show us who he truly was. I will personally tell you that Chris was always inclusive, outgoing, playful, respectful, knowledgeable, uplifting, loving, and a team player. Chris always worried about everyone else. He even shared his knowledge through artistic perception and historical and cultural content in real time about the popular trendy dance called Jerkin in 2010. Chris was phenomenal. Rest in peace, little brother Chris. My condolences go, my condolences go out to the Patton family. <clears throat> Next speaker is Vita Russell. Uh, my name is Vita Russell. I want a chance to have my concerns read. I have some concerns about our special needs students returning to in-person learning. There are so many points to touch upon and each of these points domino into another the cognitive and or physical abilities of our students. Social distancing, the understanding and ability to practice this amongst some of our students will be a difficult thing to implement. For our population, being able to sit right next to one another helps them relate to one another, and it is in their nature and how they connect with others. Mask wearing all day. Some of our students will not be able to do this either to breathing, due to breathing issues, behavioral and cognitive understanding. Also, our students tend to be more visual learners. They rely on our facial expressions and respond better when pairing facial expressions to our voices, which will become harder for them due to speaking to them through a mask. Covering of mouth and nose. Some of the students do not cover their mouths when they sneeze and or cough. This is a big issue as it leads to their saliva droplets traveling in the air and onto items in the class. This happens numerous times throughout the day. Not to mention their saliva droplets will definitely land on staff clothing, face, and air around them due to having to work one-on-one -on -one or hand-over-hand -hand in close proximity. Student and staff ability to maintain social distance. Hand-over-hand, -hand, many of our students require hand-over-hand -hand or physical assistance to complete a task that they are working on. Feeding, some students need assistance with feeding. Personal care. We have students that will need assistance with personal care, examples diapering and toileting throughout the day. This task requires staff to conduct close contact, less than six feet social distancing. These procedures are done typically three times a day and sometimes more depending on the need of the students. Transitioning. From one location to another, some students need to hold hands with staff for safety reasons. Example, if a student is blind or if a student has a tendency to run or needs extra guidance while walking to bus pickup locations. Extra staff support. If staff is placed amongst the students during the day to assist them with numerous tasks. Many of the students need extra assistance to stay focused and or redirect or assist them in participating and completing group activities or lessons. This can pose for an unsafe and unhealthy situation amongst our students and staff during COVID-19 times. Supplies of PPE. Gloves, face masks, full body cover-ups, these PPEs will need to be supplied to our staff at endless supply to properly protect students and staff. I have also concerns for the personal health and safety of our students. How can we ensure that our most vulnerable population can stay healthy? If we are not allowing our typically educated students back, why are we willing to risk our special needs students' health and bring them back to in-person learning? I do understand that it is harder for our students to benefit from distance learning However, that for them to benefit from in-person learning, it requires a lot of one-to-one, -one, hand over hand, and close contact, which in the long run puts them at a higher risk for contacting COVID-19 than if they were participating in distance learning. With that being said, we don't know where they're...
Thank you, Dr. Lucas. And President Hardy, if I may, I do wanna just uh, provide the board with a quick update. And that is that Mr. Francisco Lopez has already reached out to us and we have already shared that information with our schools. And we will also be sharing that information via uh, social media as well as email so that students directly get that information. And then secondly, I wanna thank the employees who brought forth the concerns regarding um, bringing back students with special needs. At this time, we will be following all LA County uh, Department of Public Health guidelines to ensure the safety, not only of our students, but also of our staff. We are working in collaboration with uh, CSCA as well as a LTA. Uh, before we bring back anyone, we've already agreed and determined that all students and staff will be uh, wearing uh, the appropriate facial mask, right? Um, we also have uh, disinfectant and hand washing stations, gel sanitizer, as well as gloves and other equipment are ready for the staff. And as we uh, get additional approval and guidelines from the Department of Public Health regarding bringing back our most vulnerable students, we would not bring them back all at the same time. So we wouldn't have an entire classroom of students in a, at, at a time, but rather it would be in smaller groups, uh, also known as cohorts, and they would rotate with their peers uh, to make sure that they get the appropriate support. And we're also hearing from our families that again, as uh, has been mentioned previously, not all students are thriving in the distance and, and uh, remote learning environment. So we also recognize that we need to do something different to support students who may be struggling with for different reasons. And so we're gonna again continue providing you with updates and as uh, regarding this, this need. Uh, but for the time being, we again are working in collaboration with CSA and LTA to make sure that when we're ready to do so safely, we will do so and meet the, all the county uh, requirements as well. Thank you. Was that the final public comment? Yes, it was, sir. Thank you. Now we will move on to public hearing. Um, Mr. Gallagher, can, can you um, state for the record the amendment to this item? Yes, as soon as I unmute. Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. President, as clarification for anyone that was not present during the earlier portion of the meeting, Per the board's action on item four of the agenda for, uh, for tonight's meeting, item 13 was amended to confirm that the action tonight consists of the announcement of the Board of Education's intended appointee to the Linwood Unified School District Personnel Commission. Uh, the rationale for that is pursuant to Education Code section 45246B, the governing board is required to publicly announce the name of the person that it intends to appoint to the Personnel Commission. Uh, Mr. Jose Luis Salache has served as the personnel commission, as, served on the personnel commission since uh, December 8th, 2014 as the board appointee, having been reappointed in 2017. Mr. Salache's term will expire on uh, December 1, 2020. He has expressed an interest in continuing to serve on the personnel commission. Uh, in order for this process to, to work um, according to code, the board must first announce its intent to reappoint Mr. Salace to the Personnel Commission, that a, uh, appointment would occur at a future meeting, then the board would hold a public hearing and at that point consider action for its appointment. So there's no public hearing tonight. The item for consideration of the board is a motion to confirm its announcement of the board's intended appointee, um, Mr. Jose Luis Salace. So move the item. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Lopez. Yes. Ms. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Morales. Yes. Ms. Renteria. Yes. Thank you. This item passes five to zero. I'm going to move on to item number 14, action item. Um, if there is no objection, we'll take action item 14A.1 through 14C2 um, and one, one vote. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, roll call, please. Roll call. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Ms. Renteria? Yes. Thank you. This item passes five to zero. Now moving on to consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mrs. Lopez? Yes. Ms. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Morales? Yes. Ms. Renteria? Yes. Thank you. The item passes five to zero. Now moving on to report out of closed session. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, with reference to item six of tonight's published agenda, item 6A1, the board received information, no final action was taken. Item 6B1 and 6B2, neither item was considered by the board. Item 6B3 with five to zero votes, the board uh, approved settlement. Item 6B4 with five to zero votes, the board voted to appoint Dr. Maribel Martinez to the position of Director of Student Services. Item 6C, this item was not considered by the board and that concludes the readout from closed session. Thank you, sir. Um, now moving on to adjournment. Um, is there a motion Move. to adjourn the meeting? Move. Second. Thank you. If there is no objection, I would like to adjourn this meeting in honor of Chris Patton, but also Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and we are adjourned at uh, 7, 18 p.m. until our October 18, 2020 board meeting. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.